How's it going, everybody? This is the Nitty Gritty. My name is Chad. With me, as usual, is Leonard. And this week, we are going to be hearing about Leonard's expedition to Chillicothe, right? Yes, Chillicothe, Ohio, uh, world classic, big time professional wrestling. It's the outfit ran by Bobby Fulton and his family. We've talked about their super shows that they've done in the past. This was the great Fall Bash 2 season of the Hitman because Brett the Hitman Hart was their headlining guest. Uh, I'll start with showing some, some swag I got. I have a, uh, again, this is a YouTube exclusive for those watching on YouTube, a Kerry Morton signed rookie card. Nice. Kerry being the son of Ruth Morton in a slab. I have a Fantastics branded bow tie and signed by Bobby Fulton. Who doesn't need one of those? <laughs> right. Dan Dan got one too. I should say friends of the show, Dan and Ronnie were with me and our friend Alice came uh, for the show. She couldn't make the fan fest, but she came for the wrestling show. And Dan wanted to open them and wear them. And I'm like, it's it's signed. Like, Did Dan rare his WWE ring that we got when I was there last? Uh, you know what? I, I don't think he was wearing it, and I forgot to. If Dan is watching or listening, Dan needs to start breaking that out more. Yes, yes. And then um, I did get some pictures, but the only autograph that I got was of uh, Harvey Whippleman's. So – this is a big bully music autograph I picked up online a while back, and Harvey is in some of the collage pictures. So I got him to sign it, and he also gave me another picture, him with the Rock signed as Downtown Bruno. Okay. So I need to find Dwayne. I, I need to find Dwayne Johnson now to sign it, and then I got good something. With, good luck with that. <laughs> good luck with that. Who who knows? Who knows? You never know. Uh, but um, I told. Uh, I, I, I told Harvey, I said, you're the only other person. You're the only person at the show. My wife knows who it is because we watched the young rock together. So that's why he gave me the rock. Okay. Picture. The young like rock. And then I got a picture with Harvey Whippleman as well. And I sent Chad a bunch of pictures and you're welcome to share those yeah, for the I'll, YouTube uh, folks. I'll post yeah. them as we, as you, as you keep talking, I'll keep uh, posting the pictures. Yeah. So, uh, and then I also got a picture uh, with uh, Jimmy Garvin and Ronnie Garvin because longtime fans of, the, of our show knows I'm a big Ronnie Garvin mark. And Ronnie, yeah, he's usually pretty quiet. The times I met him before, Jimmy was very gregarious, very nice. He thanked me for getting a picture with them. He thanked me for coming and talking to them. Uh, said, I hope you have a good time. Hope you enjoy the show tonight, all that. So Jimmy was was super nice. Um, so I talked to them for a minute. And then uh, also got to talk to uh, Ming and Barbarian, Haku, uh, for a few minutes as well because Dan got a picture with them. And Haku was choking people in <laughs> the pictures. So Dan has a picture of getting choked out by Haku. That's and fun. yeah, yeah, and I got to shake their hands. And let me tell you, both of them are still strong as hell. Like they got huge right. hands, still really strong. I believe that. And and we uh, demolition. Uh, he got a picture with demolition, so I got to talk to them and shake their hands for a second because I'm I'm Dan's cameraman. I'm taking pictures for him. Right. And then he got a copy of Tito Santana's book, uh, which is entitled "Don't Call Me Chico." Friend of the show, Tito Santana. Ran the show. Too. I actually mentioned to him that I got a cameo from him, and he he seemed to have no idea what I was talking about. Yep, that. <laughs> like, like not just oh, I don't remember doing that. Like he doesn't know what cameo is. Right. They probably yeah. are just like, hey Tito, say some nice things about this person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he he, he seemed kind of lost on that. But um, so I have to get the book off of Dan after he reads it because I he only had one copy left and Dan was very adamant about wanting it so I let Dan get it and, um, and then oh I got to talk to Davy Boy Smith Jr. Okay, so Harry Smith we were walking around and he was didn't have anyone at his table for for a minute and I was like ah, I'm gonna walk up and say hi to him so I, I you know told him that I was a fan of his fan of his dad I was very much looking forward to seeing him wrestle that night and he stood up to shake my hand and he is a lot bigger than I thought he was yeah he is at, at least six six three or six four and and okay. broad and I'm an idiot and I said wow you're bigger than I thought you were and he just laughed and said thank you <laughs> and he's bigger he's bigger than Nick Aldis. Nick Aldis was smaller than I thought he than I thought he was. 
us. So we were actually standing and talking to some people when Nick Aldis came in. So Nick walked right by us to get set up. And Mickey James was with him. And uh, Mickey James is the breadwinner of the family. She had a line all day. They brought their, their son and their dog with them. And Nick just petted the dog and played on his phone. Yep, that sounds about right. Because for those who don't know, Nick Aldis is, uh, you know, in a producer capacity at WWE right now. I have mm-hmm. no idea what, you know, the status of his in-ring wrestling goes. I don't know if he got injured or just decided to stop a little bit. Who knows? But, uh, you know, but well, yeah, he, he, backstage role. yeah, he did wrestle on the show, which we'll oh, get okay. to. So he did work. I, I'm, you know, he has a good mind for the business, so I'm sure he's doing good in that role. I'd be lying if I said I, I didn't want to see him on, you know, on screen again. I think, I think he still has some stuff to give, uh, you know, a, as a character. But uh, yeah, yeah, you know, the Mickey James, uh, you know, picture you sent out, uh, you know, I'm sure I've already put that up at this point. But uh, you know, if I remember correctly, she looked good in blue. So she did. She was wearing like this full blue bodysuit with a blue cowboy hat. So the people who had a line, all so Mickey James had a line all day. Bret Hart, of course. So it was in this gym at the Ohio University of Chillicothe Shoemaker Center. And the gym has an upper walkway kind of area, like an upper area around the top of the gym. And in the one corner is where they had Bret Hart. And then his line went about three quarters all the way around all day long. So I would say at least 100, 150 people deep all day. Right. And you really couldn't see him much because he sat the whole time. Right. That's where they had Sting the time before. And Sting stood a lot. So you could kind of see Sting. And Sting looked out, you know, kind of over the fans. And Brett just sat most of the time. Right. He wasn't with uh, parachuters on people? He was not. Um, I was actually uh, – Dick Aldis used the sharpshooter in his match. I know he used the sharpshooter. So I don't know if he talked to Brett about that. But yeah, I'm he sure he did. But um, so Brett Hart, Mickey James, and the other person who had a line at least 20 people deep all day long, the boogeyman. Really? Yeah. He was all boogied up too. Full costume. I remember that it's picture. Great. And yeah, I mean, I, I, but wow, that surprises me. Did he have good prices? I'm not, I, I didn't get close enough to see. Most everyone was around uh, like 25 to $30 for a picture. So what you're or, saying is you were afraid to get too close to the boogeyman. Well, he had such a line. I couldn't get close to the boogeyman. It's okay. If you're afraid to get close to the boogeyman, Leonard, you can well, say it. You're well, let friend. me tell you. Let me tell you, he was feeding people worms. That's, yeah, see, that's going to be a no from me, dog. <laughs> yeah. He was, and one guy, he chewed up the worm and then regurgitated the worms in the guy's mouth like a baby bird. Yeah. You know, there is not enough money to give me <laughs> to be like, you know, I need to have this experience and share it with the boogeyman. Like, who yeah. can tell that other than diehard wrestling fans who will understand? And, you know, not look at you like you need to be in a straitjacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, I mean, um, who else was there? So, I'm going around the room in my head. Uh, Rikishi, uh, who looked good, looked thinner than when he worked. Yeah. Uh, Victoria, Larry Zabisco, uh, Austin Eider and Tommy Rich. Did Larry uh, mention that he, you know, sold out Shea with Bruno? I, I think I ever heard him just, like, say it to nobody. Like, he yeah. was just kind of sitting there it's and had a break. And went, you know, I sold out Shea with Bruno and just kind of just went back to <laughs> yeah. But uh, see here, uh, Bushwhacker Luke, uh, Shark Boy, uh, Ted DiBiase with Mike Rotundo, IRS. I was very tempted to get both of them. So, so Mike Rotundo was there. Yes. Well, I mean, I guess, you know, you got to – keep at the convention sir i you know I, I, that's i don't want to say surprising to me but i wouldn't have guessed that he would keep that booking simply because of you know mm-hmm. the tragedy that occurred in his family you know and i'm sure i'm sure it wasn't easy i'm sure because i'm sure everybody was bringing that up you yep know? yep what ronnie and i talked about that uh that I'm sure he was getting a lot of condolences, but that was really close to when to get them. Uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, uh, 
Godfather and D'Lo. No, D'Lo Brown and Barry Windham are the two advertisers who didn't show up. Okay. So it was God, Godfather and Mark Henry, uh, Magnum TA and Telly Blanchard. And I did send you a picture uh, that, that that you need to post here. Is uh, It was Mark Henry and the Barbarian locking up. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were locking up and then they hugged. But it was it was really cool. At one point, the way we were just kind of walking around, we actually got behind Tito Santana as Tito was walking and talking to people. And we got a picture of him t- uh, talking with Jim Duggan. Uh, as, as well, um, uh, Allison K and Marty Bell were there. Um, I, I uh, from, from NWA, uh, Wildcat Chris Harris, um, Paul Burchill. Oh, okay. Uh, and Gangrel. I think that was maybe most of the notable names. So that's the fan fest. And that we were there from about one thirty to four. We went and got some eat, came back. And uh, they were doing. It was supposed to be like an like '80s legends or talk of the '80s or something like that. But I'm guessing people didn't know they were supposed to be out because the three wrestlers that came out were Gangrel, Shark Boy, and Boogeyman, who did not wrestle in the '80s. Dave Heath, I believe, was a rookie in the late '80s, like '88, '89. And actually, Gangrel said, "Was I supposed to be out here?" And someone said, "Like no," and it was like it wasn't like he he was like, "Oh, if I was supposed to be out here, I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't know." <laughs> but he was like, "Oh no, I was supposed to be out here." But he was actually really cool. He told a lot of stories and and was good to talk to. He had the fangs, and then someone asked him they were real, and he took them out. And he said, "No," he said he used to have the real fangs. You know, I don't want to say only in Ohio, Leonard, but uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Like somebody he, he asked used him, to, real fangs. <laughs> yeah, he used to have real fangs. He said he used to file his teeth, and now he doesn't do that anymore. But um, it was funny. The boogeyman was like in character, right? But people would ask him questions. Like one question was like, "What's the toughest opponent you ever faced?" He asked. That was asked to all three of them. And and boogeyman was like, "Oh, the toughest opponent I've ever faced is my next opponent." And I am the toughest opponent anyone has ever faced. And he like goes off on this random. So he was promo. in character the whole time. He was in character, and then he paused and he went Booker T. Okay. <laughs> and then like someone else asked him about how long does it take you to like get the makeup on and off, and he goes, "What makeup?" Right. And then he goes, three hours." <laughs> okay. That's... <laughs> So like he, so like he was in character. He, yeah, he was in character the whole time. But he still wow. like he gave like the character answer, and then he like paused and, he, yeah, and gave the real answer. Quether <laughs> gave the real answer. That was the best. Maybe it was because he was, nobody was talking to him in Carney. Yes, maybe that maybe that was it. Uh, but the show itself, I was keeping track of matches on my phone, but my phone died on me because I you know I was taking pictures all day, couldn't charge it and stuff. Right. And um, but it was really interesting. So the first match was Nate Matson, uh, who's done some stuff against Suicide, right? Who is the you know guy for the Impact video game that became a character that Frankie Kazarian played, you know, in a full right. body suit with mask. So we were trying to figure out who it was. Then I was looking up some stuff before we came on the air to check some of the names. And Caleb Connolly, who worked in Impact, was there. And apparently Connolly does the suicide gimmick as well on the indie circuit now. Okay. So Connolly wrestled twice. Yeah, a number of people have put that outfit on over there. Yeah, pretty sure he he wrestled with suicide and uh, came back later on. Gangrel and Paul Burchill was one of the matches, uh, which was really good, just solid. Um, You know, it was funny that I think it was Dan said to me, so do you think we could turn Gangrel face because he was working heel? Right, and, I, and so we started cheering for him. But I think because he had came out, talked to the crowd, that there was a connection there. So by right. the end of the match, he, he had been turned face, <laughs> uh, which was wasn't which a was devil turn. Devil, no, I think both. Uh, you know, if Bur- Burchill wanted to, he could have probably went Easily, with it. Yes, yeah, but it was kind of when we were walking around and we saw it was like I saw this guy, and he was you know still like a built built dude. And uh, I saw Paul Burchill pictures on the table, and I went, "Well, where's Paul Burchill?" And then I went, "Oh, that guy is Paul Burchill, right?" Because he, he didn't have like the pirate hair and the beard and all that funky <laughs> stuff. So. But that was a good match. Um, the main event was uh, Nick Aldis versus uh, Nick Aldis with Mickey James versus Davy Boy Smith Jr. 
Right. Was the name of it. And that was a really, really good match. I like the storyline for that. Uh, so uh, earlier on in the night, their women's champion was named Big Mama. So think like a Piper Nevin kind of size of a woman. Did I see her? Uh, you might have. Yeah. She might have been at familiar. the show that you, you came to. She's been their women's champion for quite a while. Yeah. Um, so she had wrestled early on against a, a woman named Ari Alexander or Ale, Ar, Ar, Alexandra or something like that. But she was and she was from Cincinnati. She came out wearing a Joe Burrow's Bengals jersey. And that was a really good match. That might have been the best match of the night, even though I really liked the main event. But Davy Boy gets on the mic and he cuts a heel promo. Because again, most of the legend people are getting face pops, right? So he cuts a heel promo. Right. And um then he said, because of Mickey James, I'm gonna have my own insurance policy. And he brings out Big Mama. So Big Mama is in his corner. So she's interfering. And then Mickey James comes into the ring and she gets tossed out, has to go to the back. Okay. And as she's beginning like escorted out by security, she trips over a small child. Oh God. And, and she's wearing like boots with probably two, three inch heels on them. So they continue the match. The ref gets bumped. Big Mama is going to go up top and splash Nick Aldis. And Mickey James comes running out in her bare feet. Oh, wow. Because she's not doing it in, in, in the boots. So she comes out in her bare feet, pushes Big Mama off the top, and hits a flying crossbody off the top onto Big Mama. And then Nick Aldis comes back on Smith, and he wins with the Macho Man elbow. Okay. So, but very, very cool match. Really enjoyed it. Uh, Boogeyman did wrestle. Um, Harvey Whippleman uh, managed a dude named Wrecking Ball Magurski. Which is a great name. Which is a great name. He wrestled a guy named Onyx. Uh, I don't know, and I actually did a guest spot on Onyx's um, podcast, which I don't know when that's going to be out or, or when he airs that, but he was podcasting. And, you know, I seen him at different shows, and I talked to him. He said, hey, you want to come on the show? So I sat with him. He asked me just about – I was enjoying things and what I was seeing, what I liked. And he had a co-host ask me, you know, well, who's your favorite wrestler and what's your favorite match and stuff like that. So I, I talked for about five to seven minutes with them. But uh, so Wrecking Ball Magurski winds up winning via interference from Harvey Whippleman. Uh, and then there's also so but then after that, um, a whole angle comes up. It's let me tell you this. It's the year 2023. And they did an angle where Austin Idol stole Bobby Fulton's tuxedo. Okay. <laughs> which I think is just the vest and the bow tie. Right. And, and then there was this whole, because he came out, so it was like Harvey and Austin Idol and Robbie Starr, who you saw was there right. and was involved. And, um, and, and it was this whole thing. And they did a beat down to the Fulton family. It was like an NWO level beat down of the Fulton's. So it was a whole it was a whole thing, uh, and then the other the other thing the other match to mention is they had a six man tag. It was a guy named Drew Skills with Ming and Barbarian against Caleb Conley, uh, Tommy Rich, and Bushwhacker Luke. Oh wow, what a they, Con Conley worked like ninety five percent of the match. <laughs> what an eclectic mix. Yes, so um, it was it was interesting to see. And, and to, to be honest, like I would, like I said, Conley worked like 90% of the match and Drew Skills worked maybe 50, 60%, but Barbarian and Ming did tag in and out. They did, they were in there much more than Luke and Tommy Rich were. Um, they have ring but, No, uh, no, no. They were, they were wrestling in t-shirts and uh, uh, jeans, I think. Yeah. I think Tommy Rich had his ring gear, but everyone else was was in was in like 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 regular pants and stuff. So there were a few other matches I'm just not thinking of, but that was the bulk of, of that. And I thought it was a pretty good show. You know, I know when you came to the, to the one that that we saw that um, you said you know the show is what it is type right. of thing. And this time I think they tried to bring in maybe some more names that could still work. You know, like Aldis and Smith and Birchill. And the last time. 
they actually asked on their Facebook page, what did you think of the show? What would you improve? And a lot of people said, yeah, I would like to see younger guys or, or, or different talent that can that can wrestle. Right. Uh, because the time before, I thought Jaron Fulton versus Kerry Morton was the best match. Right. And um, it uh, – uh, oh, now I, Robbie Starr wrestled Jaron Fulton. That's, that's who he went up against. So – uh, and and Robbie and Austin Idol managed Robbie Starr, and then Bobby was out there for Jaron. Uh, oh, the only thing I want to mention that that uh, um, is really cool, and you've got these pictures as well, was we 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 found this woman, and I believe it was her husband, walking around holding these purple crowns, and she had got signed by Hacksaw Jim Duggan and Haku, who were both kings in WWE. And she, her name is Shara Perry, and she's on Facebook. I haven't friended her yet at the time of this recording. But she is Jerry Lawler's crown maker. Right. So, like, that was, like, the first picture you sent me. And, mm-hmm. like, it stumped me because I obviously knew what the crown was. But I was like, who is this person? <laughs> like, who is this person that Leonard is with? And, like, why, you know, should I know who this is? And it was, like, bothering me. I was like, you know, is this, like, an old female wrestler that I don't remember? Like, <laughs> No, I should. You know, I would just send you a bunch of pictures that, like, context. Uh, but, uh, yeah, her name is Shara Perry. And I think she says she's been making crowns for Lawler for about a year and a half. And she also sells crowns. She makes them for fans. She made, uh, Lawler a brown and orange Browns crown because he's a Browns fan. Yeah. Uh, and she actually, Dan talked to her about maybe getting an Undertaker crown, like a purple and black, but she'll make custom crowns for people. And, and she was really cool. Oh, and then the last thing I'll mention is that Ronnie and I, we were talking to a guy, Joe Jombrowski, I believe is his name, and, and I don't have his card on me or I would plug him as well. But he had a vendor's table and a bunch of action figures like in a vat on the floor and this kid comes up, seven, eight, nine years old, something like that. He was looking for a Mason Ryan action figure because he is named after Mason Ryan. Oh, wow. Yes, Ronnie said there was a very small window that his parents were watching WWE to name him Mason Ryan. So we started looking for him when we would go to other tables. And later on, we ran into the kid again. And he had found the Mason Ryan action figure and was ecstatic about it. And well, showed it to him. That's outstanding. Yeah. So there's probably a few things I'm forgetting. But it was a great time. Their next show is going to be in March. At the time of this recording, they haven't announced yet because they said they're um, working on a, on a couple big names and seeing what right. dates work for them in March. So uh, depending on how things fall, hopefully we'll go to March. Maybe I can get you to come back again, depending on who it is. Yeah, uh, I would like to. I wanted to come to this one, but uh, you know, it just didn't work out. But uh, but yeah, I would definitely like to go to another one again soon. So I'm anxious to see who they have lined up. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'll keep you updated. So yeah, that was the uh, the show, and I really enjoyed it, and I like that I can can share that with the with the fans here, and and we'll see what they get for for March. Yeah, and I'm, you know, I'm going to stay away from the Steiner brothers if they're there this time. Yeah, you already did that. You know, that was a thing. Some of the, because, you know, I've been buying stuff online, autographs. Like, there were some people like Nick Aldis. I was like, well, I already have a Nick Aldis. It's not right. personalized, but I have one, you know. Right, right, right. So, well, there were a few people that if I didn't already have, I probably would have, you know, wanted to, to get something from that. Were, were the packages mostly like, you know, you had to buy a photo and then you got a photo with them? Was that kind of how it went? No, is and I hate this because I've seen this at other shows too, like movie conventions. And when I first started on the circuit, well, I got 20 years ago now, it used to be about 20 bucks. You could get a picture and an autograph with right. people. And then they start, some people started charging separate, right? But a combo. So most of the people were say 25 to 30 dollars for an autograph, 25 to 30 for a picture. And then so if it's 60 together then the combo would be 50. Oh wow that's getting pricier yeah yeah so i actually on the website i got steinered uh by the garvins because on the website it said 40 bucks but they charged 50 for a picture, yeah. picture with the two yeah of them. see that's yeah <laughs> virtual was only charging 20 um harvey was charging 20 i think chris harris was charging 20 so some some of them were were charging that 20 to 25 for both no, um, no knew what people would pay yeah for 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 them you know and 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 i said brett i believe was 125 just for i think 
like a picture or an autograph. I'm, I don't don't remember what his combo was, but right. he was a, he was a little bright. yeah. There was a lot of there was a lot of specifications with Brett. I remember looking at that and like you know there were yes. you know, it was a certain amount if you got X amount of items signed. If you just wanted a photo, it was X amount of dollars. You know, yeah, it was very specific, which you know I guess they have to do. Um, but uh, and I do like because a lot of shows don't let you know how much people are charging before you get there. And again, they right. may change their minds when they get there. But at least it gives you a good idea so you can kind of plan out, okay, here's – I got X amount of money and I can get X amount of autographs right? type of thing. So a lot – so I do like that they post that. And they have pre-packages too. Like I think it was for $250 you could get – They it was – I think it was 10 or 12 guys that they sponsored. Okay. Wow. 250 and I remember, and Gangrel was free if you got the fast pass. Okay. <laughs> to jump in front of lines to get your free Gangrel. Okay. Who doesn't so. want a free Gangrel? Um, yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad you had a good time. It was fun to hear about it. Also fun mm -hmm. to uh, to look at the pictures uh, and all that. So uh, yeah, we'll let you know if we uh, end up going to another one. And uh, please let us know in the comments if you went to. Uh, to Chillicothe, let us know what uh, what adventures you had, and uh, please check out our other videos: segment surgery, stupid questions, what's that card, random match reviews. We're available wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, click the like button on this video and subscribe to our content. Uh, we thank all of you for checking us out, and for Leonard, my name is Chad, and we will see you next time. <laughs>